Today, I'm thrilled to show you Edelkron's brand new motion control unit, the Action Module. Now, this is their newest motion control unit that gives you five different modes to control your Slider Plus V2 or your Slider Plus Pro. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what comes with the Action Module, how to put it together, I'm gonna show you the different modes, some examples from those modes, then I'm gonna wrap it all up and tell you what I think. So, stay tuned. So when you open up your action module, you're gonna find that it's really, really well packed into this box here. And you'll have a really generous amount of foam protecting it in that box. So in the box, you're gonna find some mounting screws. And these mounting screws mount the unit to the end of your slider plus. You're gonna find a battery plate. You're gonna to have to specify one of, I think, three different types of battery plates. And in this case, I got the LPE6, so it works with my Canon batteries. You're gonna also have to specify what cable you'll need. Um, in this case, I got the cable that connects to the 5D Mark III. This is the interface cable that the action module uses to trigger the camera shutter when you're in photo time-lapse or animation mode. You're gonna get a little hardware kit with a geared belt, and that is to replace the cloth belt that comes standard on your slider plus. The geared belt's necessary for the action module to drive the slider. And lastly, you're going to get a AC adapter. The AC adapter allows you to plug the unit in and run it off the wall so you don't have to use batteries. So when it comes to installing the action module to your Slider Plus, the first thing you're gonna need to do is replace the cloth belt that comes standard on the Slider Plus with the supplied geared belt. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail there because Edelkron already has a really great video on how to do that. So check it out at their support page. As far as the action unit, the only thing you need to do is connect the battery plate. So you line up the battery plate into place Put the screws in there, and then use the Allen key to snug those screws down to hold everything into place. Once those have been snug down, you can go ahead and plug the battery plate to the action module. Then you're going to grab the thumb screws, align the action module to the end of the slider plus, and place the thumb screws in and tighten those down. Once that's in place, you can grab a battery, lock it into place, and now you're ready to shoot. We're gonna go ahead and start off with the wizard mode. To select the wizard mode, you'll press straight down on the joystick and you're gonna move the carriage to your beginning position. To start the recording process, you're gonna press down and hold until it starts blinking record. You're then going to move the camera carriage to your ending position. Just tap the button once more to finish the recorded slide. Now it's also recorded the speed in which you slid the camera and from there you can make an adjustment to make it slide faster or slower. You also have the option of changing the acceleration so you can make that faster or slower as well. Now per to perform the recorded slide go ahead and flick the button in the direction you want it to go and in my case it's to my right and it performs the slide. Now if you wanted to loop the slide itself you can go ahead and do that by double tapping the button so if we double tap this to my left now, it's then going to loop the slide and make it go back and forth until you tell it to stop. And that's the wizard mode. Now I'll show you an example of what you can do with it. So now we're gonna take a look at the photo time-lapse mode. And for this mode, you're gonna need the shutter release cable. And that plugs into the action module and then into the camera. Now, 
you're going to select the photo time-lapse mode by pressing straight down. Now it's asking to get it to the end point. And we'll select that. Now it's asking me to get it to its starting point. And you're just using the joystick to move the th slider left and right to find your positions. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. It's gonna ask how long we're here. So in this case, I'm just gonna say five minutes. And then it asks how many frames per second. So it goes anywhere from eight frames per second up to 120 frames per second. And this is used so it can calculate how many times it has to move. So in this case, I'll just say 24 frames per second. And now it's asking me what our final output video should be, how long it should be. So I'll go ahead and I'll just pick eight seconds. And now it's telling me what my minimum shutter speed should be. Uh, meaning that I can go as slow as that or anything faster if I wish. And then I have the option of doing easing so I can ease in and out of the time lapse if I wish. Um, it's disabled, we're gonna just leave it at that. And now it's asking when I should start the time lapse. So I can delay the start if I wanted to, but right now we're just gonna start it. And it will count down into the time lapse. So three, two, one, and then it starts the process. So it will show you on the screen what your percentage of completion is. And then you'll notice it actually moves it in increments instead of just moving it slowly all at once. And this is important for someone who has a camera that does HDR. So I have a camera that when you press it once, it'll take three shots. So this would be perfect for uh, HDR slides if you wanted to. And that's the photo time-lapse mode, and now I'll show you an example of what you can do with it. Our third mode is the video time-lapse mode, so we'll select that. The first thing it'll ask you is where it's going to end, so you're going to use the joystick to find the end point. Select that. Now we're going to find the start point, and then select. It's going to ask you how long we're going to be here. And I'll say for this example, five minutes. And that's really it, that's all there is to it. It's gonna count down before it starts that slide. The main difference between a video time-lapse and a photo time-lapse is how it's recorded. In a video time-lapse, it's recording continuously from point A to point B. With a photo time-lapse, it's going to take still shots at different increments from point A to point B. So depending on your camera's capabilities, and what you want the time lapse to look like will depend on which mode will be best for you. And that concludes our look at the video time lapse mode. So now I'll show you an example. So the fourth mode is your stop animation mode. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. The first thing it'll ask you is to get it to the end point. Use the joystick to find that point and select. Then it'll ask you where to start. Get it to its starting point and select. It'll ask you how many frames per second the final video will be. In this case, we'll pick 24. And now it's asking what our total length of the video should be at the end. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick 10 seconds. And you have the option of selecting ease in and out, but we'll leave that disabled for now. Now it will display the total number of frames and what frame you're currently on. So you can animate your subject, move to the next frame, animate the subject, move to the next frame, and so on. And what's cool about this is that you can go back and forth through those frames. So if I wanted to go back to frame number three, I just move the joystick to find frame number three. Um, and that's really all there is to this mode, but um, very simple, straightforward, and uh, very effective. So uh, that concludes our look at the stop animation mode, and now I'll show you an example. The final mode is going to be the macro mode. Now in this mode, it won't ask you a beginning or end point. It's only going to ask you how fast you want it to move. You can adjust the speed in increments from 1 to 100, 
100 being this fast here. And while it's moving, I can also ramp it down. And the slowest speed is extremely slow. It's really not visible to the naked eye. So that concludes our look at the macro mode. And now I'll show you an example. So after shooting with the action module for a few weeks now, I can tell you that it, along with the target unit, will be a regular part of my video shoots. So what do I like about it so much? Well, it starts with the way Etochrone packs their products. When I received the action module from the shipping company, they had managed to crush the shipping box despite the fragile handle with care sticker. Now inside I found the action module perfectly protected by the thick padded foam, so no harm done. I was impressed with the battery life, now I was able to shoot all day with just one fully charged battery. I fell in love with the simplicity of the menu system, just a few minutes out of the box and I had it down. No math, no calculations, the unit really does it all for you. Now lastly and most important, I was impressed with just how well the action module performs. Each mode works just as expected without compromise. The only issue that some people may have is the noise that the unit creates while it's in operation. Now for me, I'll mainly be using it for b-roll, time lapse, and animation where sound really isn't an issue. But if you are planning on using it for interviews or during sound recording, take a look at my noise test video that I did on Edelkron's wizard and target module. Check for the link below in the description. But basically, I found that with proper mic placement, the noise was really well controlled, as long as you're not using the camera's built-in mics. The action module is a solid addition to any video kit and I totally recommend it for anyone looking to bring their slider press up to the next level. So that concludes our look at the action module from Edelkrone. And as always, thanks for watching.